Hey y'all, welcome to Sex Ed For You, the podcast where research meets reality. I am Lauren, a certified holistic sexuality educator. And I'm Holland, and I have a Bachelor of Science in Public Health. Sex Ed For You's podcast is for people who want to date and have great sex that is fun and safe and enjoyable. We like to empower our listeners to make informed decisions that lead to values-based living. All right. All right. Howdy. Howdy. Welcome back to our chairs. Welcome back. Mm-hmm. Ah. Ah. So we just finished recording a webinar, a webinar for parents about help my kid is seen porn, which is like, wow, impactful mm-hmm. because Why? every, every parent has that experience. Every one. Every single one, whether they know it or not. Mm-hmm. And it should have been help my kid just saw porn or help. Is my kid seeing porn? Has my kid seen porn? Well, if they're 16 and they've never told you that they've seen mm-hmm. porn, the answer is yes. Mm-hmm. So like, mm-hmm. yeah, I don't know. I'm just really happy we did that. Thanks for following. Holland and I are really into, well, I'm really into this thing called human design. I'm just poor Holland by proxy has to be there. But I am a generator <clears throat> by nature and I am meant to respond to things. And I can you feel with your like emotional authority, like how lit up I got by those questions? Yeah. Yeah. So somebody reached out yesterday and was like, so respectful, was like, hey, this is, you do not have to answer these questions for free. Put this on the podcast or put it in a webinar, but my kid just saw porn. And unbeknownst to them, literally weeks ago, a friend of mine reached out, same exact question. Kids were the same exact age. Yeah. Yeah. Um, elementary school. Mm. Elementary school. Which is not, we shouldn't be seeing porn yet. We shouldn't. Yeah. I'm st- thinking of all of these things still that I should have put in the webinar. <laughs> like, ugh, this, that, so many things. Yeah. And I, maybe we could talk about this too why I'm so passionate about it and then I'd love to hear like why you thought it was so good that we did this is that uh, this is like the first time where we guilt and shame children and where we drive sexuality into the shadows and then where they feel unsafe to talk to parents about this yeah all things sex relationships you know our own bodies masturbation so many things and so like it is the point at which so many kids feel like oh okay I can never talk to my parents about that Because, I mean, as you have mentioned many times in webinars just to me in private, that bodies and sexuality do feel inherently private Mm -hmm. to a child. Mm -hmm. They know in some part of them they can tell, like, Mm -hmm. this is something that should be private. Mm -hmm. And so I think kids, not all, but most will feel like this almost inherent shamefulness Mm -hmm. of like, oh, I should hide Mm -hmm. this. And so the bravery it takes to talk to a parent and then to be shut down and like almost reconfirmed in that oh that privacy that shamefulness like I I should keep it that way and so seeing parents take such a positive approach and reach out to you reach out to people like you and ask like hey what 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 should this conversation look like is such a beautiful perspective that I honestly didn't know existed until I started in this work I was like oh my god people can be like kind about that (laughs) wow (laughs) I just yeah it's it's just so mind-blowing to me that we would want to shut that down right? You and I have experienced this. Sometimes we'll do ask me any things on our Instagram stories yeah, and anonymously. And sometimes we will post responses to things that are as much as we can, inclusive, broad, right? And then we get the opportunity to see the responses that then come into us about the response. Yeah. (laughs) And oftentimes parents will critique the young question asker Mm -hmm. and what you and I have discussed is that that is usually because of their own insecurity yeah right so as parents we can do this thing when we are uncomfortable with the subject matter that we don't feel prepared 
uh, for that we feel uncomfortable we feel um uneducated yeah we we feel just our own shame mm. around sex what we can do instead if our kid brings us a question or we find porn on a tablet or we find a magazine i don't think magazines are really around anymore but i'm sure they they exist they're dads Uh (laughs) i don't know um is that what we instead will go to this like critiquey mode like we will critique something else like we'll get nitpicky we will try to make the person that we're talking to and in this instance our own child smaller yeah, like so we've the, seen people nitpick grammar of the person grammar. asking. And we're like, okay, doesn't matter. Like, <laughs> no, this person yeah. was so bold and brave. Yeah. And in this particular, there were instance we're, we're talking about, we got to help this person. Yeah. Make a really big, self-influenced, empowered choice about yeah. their own bodies. Yeah. We rob ourselves of those opportunities with our own children or the youth that are in our lives by critiquing, belittling the person we're talking to in order to make ourselves feel more big and powerful. Yeah, and even not, I agree with you, absolutely, about the big and powerful, but I also think that like so much of this world and so much of our own actions is based off of fear. Mm -hmm. And so much of that is just like, oh, I am not equipped, like what you said. I'm not equipped to talk about that or I don't want to talk about that or that grosses me out or they're a kid and I'm scared that talking about that will make them search it out more. And like all of those thought and trains of thought, that's what I was going for, mm-hmm. um, are just based in fear. Yeah. And we just let our let ourselves live in that fearful place, which is not a place of power. No. You know, it's so interesting. We all know that one of my favorite researchers and educators is Dr. Jack Moran. And he wrote this book, The Erotic Mind. And it's interesting because the whole thing is talking about our erotic selves and our core erotic themes, yada, yada, yada. But you get to the end of the book and he talks about how adults are need to understand that they are sex educators. Mm -hmm. Anyone who has a child in their proximity is a sex educator. Absolutely. And that if we do not get our sexual shit straight, we will negatively impact the children in our lives. Absolutely. Even if it is, yes, our own discomfort, our own ew factor, our own Mm -hmm. yuckiness around Mm -hmm. the subject, that rubs off on the children around us. Mm -hmm. Your fear rubs off on the children that are around you. 100%. Your lack of bravery to stand up for your own body rubs off onto the children your own critique of your body in the mirror when your child is watching or your niece is watching or the kid you're babysitting is watching talking about how your clothes don't fit and you're so ugly and you're so fat like Mm -hmm. your little kids are hearing that not just your daughters your sons your non-binary kids they are hearing that yes and they do store that there is so much influence on children these days and that's kind of what we wanted to talk about today yeah. was just the internet in the general. internet uh, because, porn because porn is on the internet and you know that's what we started out with today and i grew up in this really weird generation of being like i grew up with snapchat yeah but not with snap like snapchat came out as i was growing up so it's almost even worse because huh. my parents didn't know what it was right Right. But there's always that technology. Right. There is always a technology mm-hmm. that parents just don't know really what yeah. it is. Like yeah. I had Omegle. Mm-hmm. I had Snapchat. Instagram was new when I was a kid, kid like mm-hmm. in middle school. Like there were just all of these new platforms coming out. And so things like nudes were becoming much more accessible and they quote unquote disappeared within however many seconds. And so there was just this really interesting cusp of electronics and internet sexuality right. as I was growing up. And so we think that would be something really interesting to talk about. I do. Oh my goodness. It's like so broad. We yeah. could talk about it for like six episodes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, as it pertains to, let's stay on the topic of uh, teens, adolescents being exposed yeah. to this stuff. And then let's segue into um, what we have access to as grownups sure. and the ways that this messaging surrounding things can affect 
what what we do and do not feel about mm. sex and sexual expression. For sure. instance, I was thinking about, just put a pin in this, um, that clip of the podcast you sent me mm-hmm. where there's two, they seem to be cisgendered, heterosexual yeah. men were listening to some, some yeah, like interesting calling. call about pegging and butt plugs and things like that. So I want to get to that, yeah, right? Absolutely. The, the media that we are interacting with yeah. affects... Our own sexuality, and yeah. we have to understand this. But let's let's rewind and let's talk about, yeah. <laughs> so, our for many people, many young people, their first sex education came from the internet. Absolutely, wouldn't I mean that yeah. be fair to say? Yeah, because they don't teach sex education if they teach it till maybe seventh, eighth grade, mm-hmm. and that's God. I'm so bad about grades and ages. Thirteen. My kid is 13 and the youngest in her class. So like 14 is eighth grade. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. 13, 14. The, they have seen all sorts of and talked about all sorts of shit before they're 13 and 14. I had someone in eighth grade tell me about my lip bite. Okay. Like we knew. <laughs> so yeah, it's just ridiculous to think that it's okay to wait that long. And all their... The, inter- the internet is just influencing so much of these kids. So much. Which is not necessarily a bad thing. No. And this is what we talk about in the webinar, which maybe it'll, do you think it'll be available by the time this goes out or sure. no? Well, f- sure. Holland has superpowers, apparently. Um, so click the show notes and you'll see, yeah, a link to this webinar. But I, yeah, curiosity about bodies mm-hmm. and intercourse and pleasure not bad no like just not bad no it's so neutral it's so neutral and what's so interesting is that so many kids will be like "Mm, okay yeah whoa interesting don't want to do that yet but Mm -hmm. ooh, first time titillating right like oh that interests me i want to see more Mm -hmm. That doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to go out and do this thing. Yeah. But what research shows is that over time, repetitively receiving this information of especially, okay, so this is this is the problem with the internet, is that the things that are readily accessible, free, or those things that kiddos in a tablet will click like the ad, which then leads them to this, that, and the other thing, are usually heterosexual, Mm -hmm. so heteronormative, usually white-bodied people, Mm -hmm. usually skinny, Mm -hmm. able-bodied people. And with like fake... Yes. Not that that's bad. Again, Uh, People love cosmetic surgery. You can look wonderful with it. Wonderful. But it's not great for a child to see that and think that that's normal. A developing body does not need to be seeing this yet. And so, no, these, like, say it's cartoons even, Mm. right? Like, say they're clicking through and they're cartoons, but there's these big, giant boobs, right? Drawn onto this character with this tiny waist and this perky booty. Like, listen, again, all power to the people who want to work out for that or get the cosmetic surgery for that. But that is an adult choice. It wasn't a child's like it is not time for their body and their brains to be taking this in because it really does store it. Yes, it truly does. Right. Whether they want to or not, it's not like a cognizant decision they're making. Like, oh, let me keep this for later. No. no, and it's not like the people implanting these ads in children's games are like, ooh, let me give these inclusive no. bodies of all abilities and colors and shapes and sizes and ages. Yeah. That's not their intent. No, no, no. So uh, again curiosity about bodies is really developmentally normal yeah. at late elementary early middle school Absolutely, so normal i mean they're getting to the point where they even understand that they have a body yes. and that they are in a body and yes. this bodies are different yes that is a time when they're beginning to understand mm-hmm. that bodies are different yeah and that they're intriguing and that it's interesting just as their favorite game is interesting and, you know, maybe they love math. That's interesting. Mm-hmm. It is literally on the same level of like, oh, my God, this is like, huh, I mm-hmm. want to learn more about that. And we can't. This is always going to be like my, if I have like a sign that I'm marching with, <laughs> killing children's curiosity, mm. healthy curiosity is something I will never get behind. No. Because I want our children to be lifelong learners, mm. especially about things like sex and bodies and their bodies. Mm -hmm. 
I want them to be a primary lover to themselves. I want them to have a comprehensive, scientific, medically accurate understanding of their own bodies. Mm -hmm. I want them to have more exposure to excellent menstrual cycle tracking, right? Yeah. Like I, I want more of it. And so shaming children for stumbling into something that they didn't know was necessarily wrong to stumble into mm -hmm. is so flawed. Yeah. Like I, they, they most likely, yes, maybe felt some embarrassment or like, should I be looking at this yeah. type of feeling? Because again, I think it's innate. Yeah. Or they've heard somebody else talking about how this yeah. is bad. But I d they didn't do it to, like, make their parent mad. They most likely did it because of inherent curiosity. Yeah. And it should be celebrated. That should be celebrated. It so really should. I, I know. I know. Believe me. Again, I am mad as a sex educator about the things that yeah. are made accessible to children. Mm -hmm. But I think we are losing the big picture here, losing yeah. the connectivity with our children or the children in our lives because we're guilting them and shaming them for Absolutely. stumbling into something that somebody else put on their screen. And then, you know, your next step from that is an inherent shame and disgust with sex and a complete and total dislike and no chance of talking to your parents about it when they get into high school when those things become accurate when those things become developmentally appropriate when they get their first boyfriend and might have their first intercourse this is the time right. when you want your child to feel yeah. like they can talk to you like they can ask you questions and like they can ask you how to use a condom because god knows their school didn't teach them how to do it so like you really, that foundational teaching at age 9, 10, 11, when they first accidentally see porn, is so important. I have so many parents say to me, why did my kiddo not tell me? Mm -hmm. Fill in the blank. Yeah. At high school age, at college age. Yeah. Why did they not tell me that they were being sexually assaulted? Yeah. Right? Why did they not tell me? the pastor was doing such and such mm -hmm. or the youth pastor was doing such and such or their boyfriend was doing such and such yeah we need to ask ourselves how we responded mm -hmm. the first time god yeah. all research shows that we remember first yeah i remember all of mine yeah. all those conversations all of them when i do sexual narrative writing with my clients we always do a timeline mm -hmm. and always on this timeline are the firsts, right? Mm -hmm. First period, first time seeing porn, first kiss, first conversation with parents about these things. And they are memorable in everybody's body. I don't care how old my clients are. Yeah. They're 58 years old, they remember. And I believe most of them are accompanied with the feeling of shame. All of them. Exactly. I will occasionally, I shouldn't say all of them. Yeah. I should say like 2% yeah. are sex positive parenting, or the kiddo stumbled into one of the resources we mentioned in the webinar is mm. amaze.org, right? Yeah. Like the kiddo had this amazing common sense and like found a YouTube channel that was really scientific and medically accurate God, and comprehensive. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that's awesome, right? Or they used a library. Yeah. It's usually like um, just deep thinkers who are like, and then I got a library book. Yeah. And I'm like, way to go. You brilliant little child. Way to go. <laughs> and they're like, and so the porn I kept stumbling into didn't really like jive with what I was reading. Mm -hmm. like, wow, look at you. I, one of the other fascinating concepts that I learned in sex school and then went on to keep researching because I have a kid on my own was that the more we talk about sex, the more we educate, the more we have books on hand about bodies and sex and sexual expression and sexual orientation and fluidity and uh, yeah all things the later our children engage in first intercourse not sooner no. later yep because a there is not as much mystery surrounding it yeah. they know what they're going into they're yeah. like yeah my parents told me about that and wrapped up in that one they're not pressured into it by someone mm -hmm. who's like well like i don't know but we should do this mm -hmm. right but then b there's also this like yeah yeah factor 
Exactly. Like it's no longer got that mysterious behind the veil, like, oh, I've never been allowed to do this or talk about this or even know anything about it. And so now the, my first partner is telling me all about mm -hmm. it and w willing to finally do things mm -hmm. with me and I feel comfortable with them. And all of a sudden you're in a place of like, I just want to find out. Yeah. It's almost just like this innate curiosity of like, I just want to know. Right. And so instead of going into their first intercourse, their first handies and all mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. with this beautiful celebrated stance yeah. of like, oh, I'm so excited to do right. this. It's more so like, I just want to know what the fuck is going on. Like, <laughs> which again is curiosity, exactly. which again is not inherently wrong. No, but they should have a safe place to go to yes. talk about that rather than have to experience it with someone who's also the same age and probably doesn't know what they're doing. <laughs> and feel like then they can't go to their parent to talk about it or their guardian or mm -hmm. their teacher or their babysitter. It's, oh, it just breaks my heart. Yeah. Like these things we need, like community is beautiful, right? Yes. Uh, intergenerational relationships should be celebrated. Mm -hmm. I, yeah, it just, oh, it breaks my heart. And what's been so interesting for me is not only a certified holistic sexuality educator, that is a mouthful, that feels silly, <laughs> but also a parent of a now 13-year-old has been almost going through, we hear about this often, reparenting of self mm -hmm. through parenting my kid because I'm seeing like, oh, these conversations aren't that hard to have if they're had all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, sometimes there is true embarrassment. I can feel it in my kiddo. Like, yeah. it's rising up. The conversation is so uncomfortable. Other times, though, she'll bring stuff up to me. Mm -hmm. Like, it, and it's always this, like, it's like, um, mm, like if you've braided something or you're looking at a quilt, it's like the thread is just continued from the conversation we had. Sometimes it is like three months ago. Yeah. And all of a sudden they bring it back up. Yeah. And I'm like, well whoa, okay, yeah. we're back there from that conversation we were having. But amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. And that it builds rapport. Oh, my God. You know, like it's oh you're building God. such an intricate and beautiful relationship with your kid that they're not going to disregard no. at all. I might. This is what I always tell in parenting classes that I teach. Um, parenting from a sex positive angle um, with – open lines of communication, sadly, does not protect my kid from all sexual harm. No. I wish it could. Yeah. I wish there was some magic button I could press or like an amount of education I could give her. It doesn't work that way. No. All I can hope and pray is that if she encounters sexual harm, mm -hmm. she feels comfortable enough to come and tell me about it immediately. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that we can put into place an understanding of boundaries to protect our sexual values, an understanding of she will never be made to feel badly if some adult does something to her, yeah. right? Like that she has agency and autonomy over her body at all times yeah. and that I don't give two shits about what some adult says about yeah. you'll get in trouble. No, mm -hmm. no, that will not fly with mm -hmm. us. But kids need examples of oh, I didn't get in trouble for this thing, mm -hmm. right? Trust is earned through trustworthy behavior. We have to like set this up. Absolutely. Right? My kid needs many examples of me not exploding yeah. over things. <laughs> Holland gets to see me paired all the time with my kid's grades. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> my kid is nothing like me. Nothing. Um, and I, in school, it was just... I would have been so embarrassed if I had not gotten good grades because what would the teacher think about me? My kid does not care, does not care. Great relationship with their teachers. Um, but yeah, d does their homework when they want to. Mm -hmm. That's great. I, uh, whatever, t thanks sex school, understand that if I start screaming at her, about the lack of grades and start to break apart the relationship, yeah. I'm not going to have a relationship yeah. for the things that really matter. Yeah, the grades might be done, yeah. but the relationship will have been sacrificed. Yeah. And yeah. Like what's, yeah, value. Uh, which one's more important which to Which one's more important? I am not going to shame my kiddo about things that literally at the end of the day won't matter. No, yeah. It will matter if they say, I didn't think I could come to you, mm -hmm. right? Because you just yelled at me. 
Yeah. About fill in the blank. Exactly. And please hear me. I am not a perfect parent. Not at all. (laughs) Um, And it, because this is my field and I have countless clients, like I can't even, that I could never count them who tell me that they did not feel comfortable coming to their parent or their care provider yeah, because of the nature of these types of conversations about sexual harm. I am sure I'm failing in millions of other ways, but this conversation I am determined. This is the way we're doing I'm okay. determined to keep <laughs> communication open um, because it wasn't at all for me. Like for me, yes, I fell into the boat of, okay, fine, I will like obey everything, but I my parents didn't know about one crush or yeah. one they weren't safe people. Mm-hmm. I wasn't allowed to be a developing sexual human. Yeah. I was somebody's wife someday. Mm-hmm. And that's it. And we had no bond. Mm-hmm. None. It's just so sad. How do you feel your lines of communication were? Do you want to talk about this? <laughs> yes, we can. Sorry. You just immediately saw my face, didn't did. you? <laughs> if you guys were watching, that is worth hopping on the Spotify for the YouTubes because that was good. <laughs> Um, yeah. Do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah. <laughs> it just feels like appropriate. It does. No, it totally but is. But you do n- it <laughs> never totally have is. to. I never know y'all like how to throw her the ball because <laughs> as sex educators, we talk pretty openly about yeah. our lives. Yeah. Um, but I never want Holland to feel like she's got to share this. No, I want to share this. Like I was thinking it. It was just, I was like, eh, I don't know if she wants to talk about it or not. I tried lightly in okay. this area. Um, <laughs> yeah, or, yeah, whatever you want to share about your lived experience yeah. with, with encountering things, like you were saying about Snapchat, it, yeah, it, and how things were handled, how they could have been handled, mm-hmm. or, or not, I don't, I don't know, just whatever you want to take. So, gosh, there are, like, two or three things that come straight to mind, like, just raw memories. Okay. Um, the first one is one that I've told this story. I've told many a time when I had my first crush and it was on a girl. Mm -hmm. And I remember going to tell my mom and (laughs) my mom was like, no, Mm -hmm. um, it was just almost an immediately, like, we just don't do that in Uh. this house. And like, I was really young. I was like 11. So that was my first kind of like, oh, this is something I need to keep private. This is something that needs to stay like really really deeply buried (laughs) and I did for you know the next probably 10 years of my life I didn't even really come out until I was like 21 and honestly there are probably people watching that that don't even know (laughs) that and you know what it's what it is dog um do we need like i don't know a little celebration cannon yeah. <laughs> that was just like a coming out moment right like we all there's like lots of coming out moments in the world yeah. especially because sexuality is fluid y'all it is so yeah that was the first one okay. and i was fully like oh shame uh-huh. like do not do not tell people about this right. was the first okay. instinct i had about that mm-hmm. and so yeah going forward i didn't tell my parents much oddly enough though i will say in eighth grade i was sent a dick pic unconsensually and i was immediately like absolutely not like that is repulsive i just don't want that anywhere near very developmentally normal response for an eighth grader yeah and i literally wrote my mom a letter and like had her come into my room and read this letter as i sat next to her because i thought i was going to be in trouble Huh. totally thought I was gonna be in trouble I was so scared and I remember just like I literally had chucked my phone my phone it was like an iPod across mm-hmm. the room mm-hmm. it was like no <laughs> so w- that was my like whole snapchat experience I was also like a kick thing mm-hmm. if anybody knows what kick is I'm sorry same um it's like an online messaging thing And so it was just that whole area, like eighth grade, where I was like, this is gross. This is really gross. And my mom did actually react really well Mm -hmm. and like was Mm -hmm. so thankful that I had told her. I honestly don't remember, like you said in the the, um, little video that we just did about porn. I don't remember what most of that conversation was. I do remember that she thanked me for telling her and hugged me. In my trust system, <laughs> the last T is th- be thankful. Yeah. Because I swear our kids aren't going to remember the conversation. We're going to remember so much more. They will remember guilt, shame, or thankfulness. Yeah. I totally. You've I, told me the story before. Yeah. And you've used the same words that uh-huh. she thanked you. And I'm she like, thanked me. And I, I was just like, oh, it's thank important. You. Yeah, it's so important. Um, but there were so many. It was very much like a hills and valleys type mm-hmm, relationship mm-hmm. in that. Because obviously, as I said a few minutes earlier, like, 
I was also told, shut the fuck up about, like, my crush on a girl. Not literally. My no. mom did not tell no, no. an 11-year-old oh, it to shut up. No, no. But, like, it, that's what it felt right. like in my body. That's what my body read it as. So then I was very conflicted as far as, like, what is okay to tell my parents? Mm. I don't know. Because this, I think the difference was, for me, this eighth grade thing with the dick pic wasn't consensual on my part. Right. So for me, it was okay. inherently okay. I knew this probably isn't going to get me in trouble because I didn't want this. And I didn't send anything back. I knew he was too old. He was like a junior or a senior at the time. And I was an eighth grader. I was like, I knew that this was wrong. I'm sorry, I'm just laughing. All the penises floating through <laughs> the, the internet. Penises. There's so many So of many. Sorry, Faceless I penises. Look giggly. <laughs> So many penises. Yeah, non-consensual dick pics is not, it's not okay. And it's not hot. It's not. It's really not attractive. Mm -mm. I don't know what you think you're going to get out of that. Mm -mm. It's not sex. So much sexier to say, hey, I'm thinking about you, right? Let me know if you'd like a photo of, right, of my genitalia. You don't have to say that, (laughs) but not just like a photo, because we might be thinking we're getting like a sexy selfie in the mirror, shirtless pic. Like a little, like a little V. Yes, that's (laughs) That's what we want. Then a a piece of genitalia. No, especially at like developing ages. Yes. Like I've never seen a a penis in real life. You think I want to see a flash on it? Like, (laughs) I don't want to see that. It's scary. <laughs> no, 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 no. No. Oh my gosh. You know what's more attractive? Another alternative, like your little, like your little heart on in your pants. Yes. Also more attractive, but also ask for that. Ask. But still more attractive than just a straight up peen. Yep. I don't want to see that. Literally, my favorite dick pic that I've ever received was under clothes. Yeah. Yes. My favorite has was um, an after the shower, like, could see kind of like the top of it and mm-hmm. the V with yeah. like a little bit of the towel. Woo! It was more you. It still gets me hot. We like you. <laughs> yeah. We like your face. We your like your penis. wet hair. I, I love penises. My friends Same. love them so much. Love a vulva. I, yeah. An out of context piece of genitalia. Uh, without con- without consent yeah. is non-consensual. Yeah. But it's also just, it's not going to get the response you want. No. It is going to get a, uh. It's like medical at best. Yes. Like I almost just probably because I was in a health field, just look at it, I'm like, hmm. Huh. <laughs> That's exactly that what looks, I do. The other that's thing interesting. is. interesting. Like, <laughs> right, I know there's like not safe for work or whatever. But like, yeah. But I have received dick pics when I've been like in a public setting. Yeah. You're like, what if I wanted to look at that longer? Like, yes. <laughs> and then like disappears or you're like, oh my God. Like right? I hope like, no one, no one around me saw that. Like, yes. And it's so just unsexy. That's the general vibe of what we're telling you. Please stop because Don't it's not it. sexy. Don't do it. Do I'm it consensually because you're much more likely to get the response, the response yes. that you would like. Yes. Your success rate will go up. <laughs> like, truly. <laughs> Yes. Give yourself a shot, my guy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Let's let's segue into okay. In many states, and this is state by state. Let's let's. This is kind of gonna. I don't know. Like tiptoe between what we were talking about with adolescence and internet. Okay, Mm -hmm. and dick pics. Right. In many states, if a minor Mm -hmm. is sending nude pictures, they are going to be the ones bearing the punishment Mm -hmm. for this. So if you're a parent out there, this is something to tell your kids. If you are a person out there who is mm-hmm. under 18 listening to our podcast, this is something to keep in mind. Yeah. Putting photos in a device and mm-hmm. sending it across the internet is considered child pornography. Yeah. If you are under 18 years old. Yeah. And the child bears the ramifications in most states. It's so stupid. It is beyond stupid. Yeah. And it is real. Yeah. No, I vividly remember. children should know about this. I I knew about it. I don't know how I knew about it, but I think it was like a scare tactic given to me in my Mm -hmm. super conservative public school. Um, Those -hmm. two things shouldn't go together, but (laughs) they did. And I remember vividly, and my boyfriend at the time, whom this was like the third kind of thing I wanted to tell you or talk about, was that I didn't tell my parents about my sexual assault. I was sexually assaulted for nine months to a year. I don't really remember how long exactly. It was a long time. And 
it was just like a buildup of a relationship that I was in. And I didn't tell them about it because, again, I thought that it was going to be my fault. Yes. thought that I was going to be in trouble. And he would often make me send him photos. And I remember vividly being terrified of like, oh, my God, I'm going to be in trouble if somebody finds out. And that added to the another layer of I'm not going to tell my parents because I've sent him photos of me. And, you know, I am, thankfully, I was at the time smart enough to know not to put my face in them. But even then, I was like, they're going to, I mean, like, I have moles, you know, <laughs> like people know what is my body. And I was terrified that not only would I be getting in trouble legally, what was more scary was my parents finding out and that they were going to kill me. I was terrified. And that was unconsensual. It's not mm -hmm. like I wanted to send them. Right. Oh, my goodness. So many things. So many layers here. So many layers. Sorry, guys. That's okay. <laughs> so good. This was going to be, you know, just casual conversation about <laughs> internet and sex. And, yeah. Well, uh, no, it's, it's something we've got to talk to our young people about. And then we have to keep open lines of communication. Yeah. We just have to. Yeah. It, and also, side note, it ain't cool if you are demanding photos of somebody, no matter what anybody's age is. No. Like... It, it, that's not okay. No one owes this to you. Everyone has agency and autonomy over their own bodies at all times. And so if you are ever in a relationship where someone is, yeah, demanding photos of you. Yeah. Yeah. I talked with a guy for like a hot second. Yeah, who absolutely was demanding. And mm -hmm. this is, you know, this is an interesting conversation because core erotic themes, right? Uh, in fantasy, in a consensual partnership where we are playing with kink and BDSM modalities, when we have a developed and a discussed dominant and submissive role, these things can all be fine. Mm -hmm. But I, I sent you a reel the other day of one of my favorite um, doms having a whole outlined conversation of red, like safety words, yeah. red, yellow, green, mm -hmm. and how it would be discussed and how it would be talked through. My gosh, right? Like we all could learn from the kink and BDSM communities Absolutely. so much. But we also can't fall into that he's just being dominant when he or she is demanding no. something. And that's what this guy was different. that I had met on an app. And yeah. then like literally within 24 hours was like demanding certain photos for yeah. me. And I think as a sex educator, I always try to lean into Okay, grace and compassion for Lauren because that was in some ways sexually erotic and stimulating. Same. Yeah, right? absolutely. My situation was that way. Yes, right? And we, it is. it doesn't actually help us to just heap guilt and shame on ourselves. No. It's not a solution. And it's not fair. It's like, Lauren, I get what it titillated you erotically. Yeah. Um, but this is what is not helpful and is actually harmful. Yeah. But I didn't know. I had to teach myself. I had to go mm -hmm. to sex educator school to yeah. learn these things, right? That these are the types of things that should have been discussed, mm -hmm. right? That that the desire for that, the yeah. desire to play with power, yeah. listen, there's nothing the wrong with that. The desire to be told what to do, mm. so strong, but different than the desire of not even desire, different than the experience of being demanded of something yeah. when you barely even know a person. Yeah. Different than or even if you do everything this guy was saying, right? Yeah. Different from uh, I, I'm going to use the word abuse. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Using power to control another mm -hmm. and to take power over, manipulate, control mm -hmm. um, through, in our terms, sexual content. Absolutely like, not okay. No, and highly erotic, sure. Mm -hmm. Highly destructive, yes. Yeah. And this is where as sex educators, it's just so important for us to lean into consent conversations and all of this nuance because it's crucial. We are not saying that power and violating prohibitions and ambivalence and longing are bad. They're no. not. No, they're wonderful. They're really Within beautiful. Within the right context. Yes. <laughs> and with communication, for the love of God, if there's one thing that we can drill into your brain, yes. communication. <laughs> <laughs> like, yes. Changes the world. Changes the world. P parents to children, partners, yes. I, friends, co workers, work. employers, bosses. Oh my gosh. Everyone. Communication no. will change your life. Yeah. And it will heal the world. Yeah. I swear it will heal the world. It's beautiful. It truly is. 
let's, so we, we've, we've segued, I'm glad that came up too, right? This concept of sending pictures through the internet. It is considered child pornography in so many states. Please talk to your kids about this. Mm -hmm. Please, please, please also talk about the fact that once uh, a term I use with young people is digital citizenship, Mm. that once something is in the internet, in somebody else's phone, even if they have said, send this to me, I won't show anyone else. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We it's don't there. know yeah. who else is going to get their phone. We yeah. don't know anything beyond that point. And, like, breakups are real. They are. Let's segue into mm, media. Could be porn. Could be things that we see on our Instagram or TikTok mm-hmm. feeds. It could be anything mm-hmm. that influences who we are as sexual beings. Ooh. Let's talk about this a little bit because I feel like it's still internet, right? Yeah, I feel like it's absolutely. still in line with this. Um, on the webinar, we were talking about how most mainstream porn that is free and accessible um, is tends to be, not going to say is, tends to be heteronormative, mm-hmm. tends to be white, thin, able bodies. Mm-hmm. And that could be fine. It also can be incredibly destructive mm-hmm. because most of us don't look like the bodies mm-hmm. that we see in porn. Most of us don't have the sex that is in readily accessible mainstream media free porn. Um, yeah. And then it can also send messages about what is and what is not acceptable in your bedroom. And before you know it, this random <laughs> thing that you're seeing on the internet is influencing the sex that you are having with your partner isn't just a fun thing you've watched yeah it is influencing the things you do and do not Mm -hmm. do in your own sexual relationships with real live people yeah we've all heard the word um comparison is the thief of joy yeah and that truly can be part of it and i don't mean that in a way of like never watch porn i don't mean that at all truly mean it in the way that we're talking about of like hey maybe just take a, everything you see with a grain of salt yes it's not real it's choreographed mm-hmm. literally and there are people behind cameras saying hey do this do yeah. that they're like choreographing it your sex is not choreographed i hope and <laughs> i just think- unless you're a dancer like me no i'm just kidding i don't think i've ever choreographed a sex scene in my own home. That would Could be, be fun, but something to play with, not Asterisk. something to expect. Yeah, no. And no. it's just, yeah, just a different angle. Um, all the things that we consume on yes. the internet, every single TikTok video, Instagram video, it makes an impact on your brain mm-hmm. of mm-hmm. some kind. Yeah. So just like the awareness of that in and of itself is enough to be like, oh, okay. So I don't necessarily need to be impacted as harshly by what I've just seen. Or I can even just acknowledge that it is impacting me. Yeah. Just let yourself see that perspective rather than be like, no, no, no. Right. (laughs) The (laughs) analogy that I use all the time, which poor Helen, sort of this a million bazillion times, is that porn is to sex what Fast and Furious is to driving. Mm Mm-hmm. I love the Fast and Furious movies. I love all race scenes. Like any car chase scene in a movie is like my favorite. I, I don't look at that and think, ah, this is how I drive. should drive. I, I need drive. to start driving this way. No, I enjoy it fully for what it is. I like love it. I love the like adrenaline that starts coursing through mm-hmm. my veins. I love the excitement. Mm-hmm. Um, but y'all, <laughs> there's so much movie magic involved yeah. in this. And trained drivers, mm-hmm. and stops and starts, and the roads have been cleared, and I mean, so much stuff. Yeah. Right? So it's the perspective of, yeah, this is not real life. Yeah. I think I grew up, though, knowing that those are stunt drivers. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking about it, I'm like, I think I probably, like, how did I know that? Probably my parents, right? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, there was probably like fun conversations just about, wow. Like that stunt driver driver training. I don't know. But I always knew that it wasn't real. Yeah. And then guess what? I had to take driver's ed, which was mandatory before I got behind the wheel of a car. Thank God. Right? And then had hours and hours and hours of behind the wheel. Yeah. We don't have that for sex education in this country. And so we must do our own work Mm -hmm. to 
decolonize the sex education that we're getting and look at, fill our own brains with the type of education we should get because mm-hmm. nobody's doing it for us. Mm-hmm. So whether you seek out a certified holistic sexuality educator or use YouTube or listen to our podcast or, or just talk to people. Yes, talk to I real people. more people just talked about what sex actually looks like because just looking at it on the internet is not real like Mm -hmm. i don't care if it's an influencer who feels like your best friend she's not (laughs) talk to your real best friend or talk to i don't know just Mm -hmm. anybody because talking to real people about real sex can be so beautiful so beautiful and the more we normalize it oh my goodness the better the better the better Um, Speaking of, one of the things we wanted to normalize with this whole conversation was this concept of stimulation of the anus and the prostate for people who love having sex with women, who Mm -hmm. still feel heterosexual, for men who feel drawn to sex with women and enjoy stimulation of the prostate through anal penetration, whether with a butt plug or whether with something else. Yeah, As speak they to us. Should King? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if hear me out. If it was considered lesbian to touch the clit, I would be full blown lesbian. Okay, but I could still also be straight. Like you would still be straight if yeah. that was considered lesbian. Uh-huh. That is like you're not equivalent. Definitely not anatomically. But like <laughs> it's very similar. <laughs> you have a prostate. Yes. Access that motherfucker. Yeah. Oh my God, there are so many videos out there that are like, oh, wow, if you like it in the butt, you're gay. And shame on all people who've ever said this. I Bodies are to be enjoyed and pleasure is delicious and wonderful and mm-hmm. the greatest antidote to pain and healing and magical. Uh, what? No, y'all. <laughs> quick anatomy lesson men people born male and with male genitalia have a prostate Mm -hmm. Uh, people with a vulva don't okay they can fully enjoy anal and there are so many different reasons wish we had the puppets with us right now right it can create a tighter opening for the vagina it can create pressure in different areas it can create more pressure on the perineum it can be beautiful and delicious and many people feel orgasmic from anal penetration when they have vulvas but let's talk about the male body they love this because they've got prostate yeah which is just so close to all of these great organs. Just Google the prostate. Look at where it is. Look at how it presses up against all these delicious things. If that sounds interesting to you, play with it. Yeah. It's your body. Absolutely. It is 100% your body. Yep. And I loved the video she's referring to. We saw a video of this podcast. Let me see if I can quickly find it. We have not fact checked this podcast. We do not no, know I don't what these really people are like in real that. life. But it was a beautiful stumble. And while you're looking it up, Helen sent it to me because these people didn't know who was calling who yeah, who was calling in and with what question they were yeah. calling in with. And they respond with they are two uh, presenting cisgendered yeah. and heterosexual people. We don't know anything about that. And you see them <laughs> reacting with surprise. Yeah. But you do not see them reacting with yuck no. or disgust or shame. No, they were like, tell me more. Oh, my God. And the podcast is Getting Deep with Chad and JT. Yeah. And they just seemed, well, Chad and JT, that's actually really funny that we were like, they're definitely <laughs> hetero cisgendered and their name is Chad. Okay, sorry. Had to just... And, you know, love that irony. But they were just curious. Uh And as we've said a million times already on this literal singular episode, (laughs) curiosity should be celebrated. celebrated. And we were just so, I literally watching it, I sent it to Lauren. I was like, I am just so proud of the way that these men reacted to this call. Yeah. We, in friendship, in community, if we're going to do what Holland was saying earlier, which is talk to people about sex, we have to abide by this lovely phrase, not yucking someone else's yum. Yeah. We need to just practice our blank resting face. Mm-hmm. We need to practice curiosity. We need to practice openness. What is yummy for somebody might not be for another person. That's okay. Yeah. It is so okay. And you watch these guys be like, whoa, what? Yeah. What? Tell me more. Yeah. And 
it doesn't have to be your cup of tea. You don't have to go home and try no. something. But check, please check your biases, mm-hmm. where they're coming from, where your like gut reaction of you may be coming from. Mm-hmm. Is it coming from your dad, your grandpa, mm-hmm. from outdated, antiquated, ill-informed, not scientifically accurate information? From fear of being put in a box that you don't want to be put in because guess how many other people have been put in that box? Yeah. Is it coming from internalized homophobia? Yeah. Check yourself. Yeah. It's such a fun learning opportunity. It really is. Uh-uh. Anyway, so to any male-bodied person out there who's listening to this, yeah, try stimulation of your anus. If you're curious about it. Yes. You don't even have to. You don't have to. Absolutely don't. For hetero people in female bodies out there, please don't make your male-bodied partner feel small for mm-hmm. wanting to try this. Mm-hmm. You also don't have to be interested in it. No. You also can support him and his sexual privacy and agency to himself yeah. to attempt things like butt plugs when he is masturbating. Yeah. This could be celebrated. It yeah. does not have to be your yum. But please, please, please resist the urge to shame yeah. as an adult, somebody Absolutely. else's curious desire about their own body. It is truly harmful. It is. It will impact somebody. Yeah. Harmfully. Same thing is going to happen as what we were saying earlier with parents talking to kids and being shaming of them. Mm -hmm. Your partner is going to start not bringing you things. Yeah. You do not have to be into it, but please do not take away their agency and autonomy of themselves to explore something that is safe and delicious for them. Yeah. I, no, again, with healing the world. (laughs) Oh, there are so many things we can try. Um, Please, if you are playing with butt play, um, use things that have a flange. We show, so bring things have into the Have a flare tree. on the end. Yes, please, please it flare your like end. It should be like tiny thing and then big thing so that it doesn't get sucked up inside and you have to go to a hospital and really awkwardly have to tell somebody, I don't know, it just landed on a shampoo bottle somehow. Don't do that. Nope. Flared the, ends. The base needs to be so much wider so it doesn't get sucked up in your booty hole. Yeah, it's bad. It's really bad and it happens often like so so often, much more often loves. than you would think so often there yeah. are so many silicone body safe silicone toys on the market it could be there tomorrow via the amazons mm-hmm. um please but we'll put links we will literally. literally put links we'll do mod has some beautiful products that we love so so much and they are so soft and so supple and lovely and lots of different sizes you can get like training devices there's so many like so many <laughs> don't do things that don't have a flare on the bottom. It's really dangerous. It's really dangerous. Um, and two, Holland's note earlier, check your media, check what's filling your feeds. Mm-hmm. Like just check them. And if they are, you know, comics or um, yeah, podcast hosts or influencers or whatever that are not speaking with sex positivity. And are not aligned with your values. Unfollow them. Yeah. Stop it. Follow folks who are inclusive and broad and curious and, yeah, don't have to agree with everything, but agree with the concept that we can all have yeah. agency and autonomy. I almost think of it in this way. If this person pops up on your feed, if your body has an immediate negative reaction, that's probably not someone you want to follow. It doesn't have to be someone who's perfect. God knows none of us are. But... Just make sure you're following people who fulfill you in a way that social media should (laughs) rather than the way that social media has become. So to wrap this podcast up, we've talked about lots of things, but the theme has been the internets and its influence and what we run into and how we deal with what we run into. Mm -hmm. The guilt and shame that is constantly kind of like showered over everybody, whether it's parents, whether it's partners, whether it's what we do to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So if you're an adult listening, consent, 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 lean into curiosity Mm -hmm. and control what comes into your feed. Yeah. Yeah. So consent, curiosity and control. Wonderful. The The three three C's. C's. Okay. If you are a parent listening, please remember that open lines of communication Mm -hmm. are so, so, so important. And yeah, sex is fun and great. Bodies are fun and great when we are all on the same consensual page. Absolutely. And mm, so much out there to be played with that needs to be consensually communicated first. 100%. Thanks for coming to this episode. 
haha ha, coming to this episode <laughs> four c's <laughs> <laughs> and coming always um please remember that these are our opinions and we encourage you to foam your foam form four. your own <laughs> take what you like and leave the rest if you are interested in individual sexuality education if you're like whoa kids are around me and i don't know what i think about anything (laughs) regarding these things um you can reach out to us to request a free console where can i do that holland at sexedforyou.com forward slash free console and i will decide whether you get to meet with her or not because sometimes we have creepy people try so be not creepy answer our questions don't be creepy tell us what you're looking for that's all we ask um yeah please remember that you have a right to self-determination um you can follow us on instagram at sex underscore ed underscore four underscore you and yeah make decisions choose who you follow stay away from us if we don't serve you yeah it is fine um if you are looking for that webinar that we referenced earlier um look into the show notes and you'll find more information yeah we also have a bunch of downloads if you ever just want to like learn some stuff off the cuff because those are fun that's fun so and more digital courses should be available to you in the year 2024 yeah. don't know when you're watching this maybe that was last year maybe this is this no this will be this year no i'm just saying what if this is a content somebody stumbles on in 2026 oh wow yeah i didn't think about that i listen to podcasts sometimes and i just go way back that's so true okay well hello future <laughs> hi how am i doing have Hopefully. i finished school yet totally okay. so well yeah that'd be so fun have a great day y'all thanks for being here bye bye